Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Amanda Harmoning. I'm an admin assistant with AERA. Um, today's presentation is going to look a little different. I am going to show you how to use the search function out at engineprofessional.com. Uh, earlier this year, I did an article about this function, and um, you may or may have seen it if you are a subscriber of our magazine. Otherwise, this is just a great tool um, if you're looking for specific information to find a specific article we have done or see if there is an article out there with the information you are after. So in order to continue today, I am just going to hop over to a live screen real quick. All right, so as you can see here, um, this is the homepage of engineprofessional.com. Real quick before we get into that search function, as I mentioned, um, you can subscribe to the magazine. It is a free subscription. So when you're out here on the homepage, you can always just hit that subscribe button and follow the prompts and um, get your subscription up to date. Today, however, we are going to focus on the magazine itself. Um, on the homepage, we always keep the most recent issue, which right now is our April through June, our second quarter of 2022. And to see any past issues, you can just hit archives. So we'll give that a moment here to load. Now, once you are out in the archives, you will notice that we have all of our issues on there dating all the way back to 2008 when we started. Um, there's just an abundance of information that has been in here over the years from, as you can see, a process article dating back to pre-Process Pro, back when we had Process SA, through um, engine builds, and um, just tech articles upon tech articles. There's a lot of really great content here, and we just want to make sure that everybody is getting the best use out of it. So the search function that we're talking about today is this little um, magnifying glass up in the top corner. If we click on that, it pulls up our search bar. And in here, you can type whatever it is you're looking for. Um, maybe you want to find an article by a specific person. Maybe you're looking for something on a specific topic. Uh, for the sake of a demonstration, we're just going to search and try and find um, that article I did on this particular subject. So I'm just going to go ahead in here and I am going to type my last name and hit search. And as you'll see, it pulls up the article in our most recent issue, uh, one from January, as well as a couple older ones. Um, there's two pages of content here. So if I go to that page, I've got even more. Uh, but for today, I happen to know that the one I'm after is this issue here. So I'm going to hit read more. And then you'll see when you click into one of these, um, instead of just seeing those header articles, you can scroll down and it'll show you all the articles that were in that issue. So in this one, we've got uh, Steve Fox's article on how AERA began. We've got an article from Mike Mavergan on roller lifters. Um, we've got Valve Springs by Fernando. And if we look, here is the article on the archives. So I know I'm in the right spot. So being I know this is the issue I want, I can click on this hyperlink right here. And that's going to take me out to the flipbook for that particular issue. Now, a real quick way to find the article when I get out here is, again, to use that search box and do the same thing. Page four, I know, is just going to be our table of contents letting me know where to find it. And that means page 72 is probably where the article began. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll see it flips me right to that page. And it looks like this is actually the article by Rob Monroe. So we can go on to the next one. And then we see, OK, here's the article I want. So I can X out of this. And then I am able to see the article starts here. I can scroll onto the next page and see that it finishes there. 
Now, as you can see, the font can appear a little small when you're reading. You can always use this little zoom in, and that'll allow you to see everything closer up. Or let's say you want this just handy. You want to buy your computer, so anytime you want to use that search function, you have it at your fingertips. You can go over here to the print icon, and we can say, okay, we want to print a range. I want to print 74 through 76. Now, if we do that, what you're going to notice is where this gets a little tricky. See, 74 is the tail end of Behind the Scenes by Rob Monroe. 75 is an, that, and 76 is actually where my article starts. So we'll hit cancel. The reason for that is, as you can see down here, it shows 76 to 77. In these flip books, the cover page is considered uh, page one and page two. So um, you gotta take that into account, and it's really easy with that preview if you hit the wrong page number to just backtrack and say, okay, I need to switch it up. So we're gonna go back in and we're gonna say, nope, we know it starts in 76, we figured that out. We're gonna go through 78. All right, so I'm gonna hit print here. And then you have the option to choose your printer. So you can choose to print to an actual printer, or you can, and then you can just hit print and it'll print out. I always recommend if you do this to check up here, make sure it does say you're printing three pages and not 124, because the last thing you want is to hit print and find you're doing the whole magazine. Otherwise, you can go ahead and you can do print to PDF, and that'll allow you to save it to your computer, which I find is nice because then I can save it somewhere in my system out on my server so I can refer to it later, uh, especially with tech articles. If it's something you feel you're going to want to come back to later, it's great to just have that option to save it as something you'll remember or put it in a folder you'll remember, and then you have it to refer back to in a digital form as well as a paper form versus having to come out and find it again. So if I print a PDF, and I happen to be in my documents folder, so we're just going to save it there, and we are going to call it search function engine professional. Then I know I can easily find it, because I'm going to know based on that title what this article is about. So I'm going to hit save. It's going to just take me back to that page. I can exit out of there. And then what I can do is I can actually come out here to my files. I'm going to grab that article real quick and show you what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I have pulled up that article and I've got three pages there. Just like we thought we were gonna get. And it does tell me right across the top what issue it's from. Um, the date and time that I print, I did the print to PDF, and it's got a link reference at the bottom as well, which is nice to have, um, again, in case you need to go refine something. So now, again, if I wanted to print this, one thing I can do is I know page two happens to be an ad. So if I wanted to just come over here, I could say page one, comma, page three, and hit tab to get out of there. And then if I look at my preview, what I'm going to find is now I've got two pages, and it's just those pages with the article. So then I can print those, and I'm not wasting ink or paper on um, the advertising. If the ad's something you want, you're like, hey, I want to give these guys a call, you can go ahead and leave that on there. Um, but if you're just looking for something to staple in or three-hole punch and put in a binder, you might find, especially in this case where it's just two pages, being able to print back-to-back um, and have that one sheet of paper might come in handy. And then, of course, you would just hit print and it would spit out. But I'm going to hit cancel here because I don't want to print that today. And we're going to come back over here. Um, being a heavy, just a couple other things to know about Engine Professional. If I go all the way back to the beginning, another way to find the article is you can just scroll in a couple pages or use your arrows to get 
from page to page and come to this table of contents. And then down here, I can look through again and I can find the article I'm after. And as you can see, it says 74 for the page number for my article. But it also shows I'm on page two right now. And if I look, I'm on page four and five, not two and three. So what I can do is I can take that 74 and I can come down here to the bottom to this little box and I can type 74 in there and hit enter. And it's gonna take me to that page in the PDF, which is gonna get me close to the article I'm after. So I can scroll ahead and boom, I'm there. Or if you wanna make things slightly more complicated, I guess you could take that 74, add two pages to it for those cover pages and type in 76. And sorry, I hit the wrong key there. I'll hit enter. And then boom, we're right where that article is. And again, you can just scroll through, look at it, you can zoom in, see what you want. Um, something else really cool we've implemented this year is if you look, like here I've got my email address. If I click on that, it's actually a hyperlink. So it's gonna open it and allow me to send an email. So if I click on that, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna just take me right out to that website. So if you're looking at the digital version of these, a great way to reach out to those advertisers is to click on some of those hyperlinks and um, take advantage of that to get out to what you wanna find and look at the stuff they have available. Or, you know, if you wanna just peruse through the whole issue, we just go on back to the beginning and you can use your mouse to scroll through or again you can use those arrows and just take a look at anything like here we've got an ad from SBI let's say you wanted to check out what they got going on you can click on that come out here and you're on their website you've left engineprofessional.com but we can close that out and you'll see it does keep EP open it does not close it on you it's just opening in a new tab up there And then once we're done, we can go back and we got our issue here. So once again, we can um, head back to those archives and find something else. If there's something else we're after, or if you're done, you can just close out and move on. So I know this video has looked a little different, you guys. I just wanna thank you for taking time to tune in and check it out. Uh, there really is a lot of great information and inf in engine professional um, a lot of great technical articles in every issue if you are not already subscribed to the magazine and you want to receive a physical copy just make sure to hit that subscribe button it'll take you over here to the subscription information you hit it again it's going to take you to the page to fill out your information your mailing information to make sure you get those issues going forward um, another thing you can do is you can go out to our different social media platforms and follow us there. And this is just a great way to know when we have it online. So if you do not want the physical copy, but you wanna know when we have a new issue out on engineprofessional.com, go out to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever platform you prefer and give us a follow and then we will let you know. Uh, but typically our issues come out quarterly. So we have one in January, April, July, and October. And typically it's pretty early on in that month, if not the tail end of the month before that we post those out to the website. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a buzz or shoot me an email. My information, as you saw, was at the tail end of that article we were looking at. Right there. And I am happy to help you with this search if you need help or um, answer any other questions you may have. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I wanna thank everybody for tuning in and I hope you have a great rest of your day.